Today we're still in the analysis of two categorical variables. Right now we're looking at how to perform inferences for that type of data, specifically a hypothesis test for a contingency table. So for this scenario, we're looking at a relationship between snoring and the risk of heart disease. And we're going to do this hypothesis test looking to see if there's sufficient evidence to suggest a relationship between snoring and heart disease. So in step one, we're going to state our population first. For this problem, it appears that there is no um, specific population listed. And so our population here will just be the general public. And then our sample is going to be the 2,484 people who were included in the study. So next in step two, we will be defining our null, so H sub O and our alternative H sub A. Remember for these problems, we have no null value or no parameter we're trying to make an inference on. We just want to see if there's evidence of a relationship. So the null then will be words and we'll be saying there is no relationship between our two variables which here are going to be snoring and heart disease. And then when you do the alternative, it will be a statement of something happening or a relationship. So here H sub A is going to be, there's a relationship between snoring and heart disease. So writing these null and alternative, you don't have a parameter you're trying to make an inference on, you're just interested in if there's a relationship between your two variables. Then when you move into step three, your testing, for these problems, we are going to have to assume that the sampling distribution of the chi-square statistic is a chi-square distribution with, remember, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one degrees of freedom. So for this problem, we have two rows, snoring and non-snorers. And then we have two columns, yes, heart disease, no heart disease. So I come up with one degree of freedom. So for a two by two contingency table, we will always have one degree of freedom. When I check conditions, remember there are two parts. You can have less than 20% of your cells with an expected count less than five and no expected count can be less than one. Now, because these are based on expected counts, I will have to go into my table and calculate expected counts for all of the cells because the counts that are listed are observed values. So to calculate expected counts, remember it's the row total, so 1105 times the column total, which for this problem is going to be 110 divided by the grand total, which would be 2,484. So we'll do this for each cell. So after we've calculated all of our expected counts, I can see that the smallest expected count is up here in the snoring and yes, so at 48.93. So I could also say that my minimum expected count is equal to 48.93. So that will verify both the less than 20% of cells have an expected count less than five and none are less than one. Next, because my conditions are met, I can proceed to calculate the chi-square test statistic, which remember for these problems is going to be observed 
minus expected, squaring that difference, and then dividing by the corresponding expected. So if I were looking at the snoring in the yes uh, heart disease, I have an observed of 86 minus an expected of 48.93. I'm going to square that difference and then divide by that expected of 48.93. I will continue to do that for each of the cells. After I've done this, I'm going to do each of the individual calculations. All of those values up, I come up with a chi-square test statistic of 52.92. I will then use that to find my p-value in step 4. In step 4, letter A, under the null, the sampling distribution of the chi-square statistic has a chi-square distribution with some of the one degree of freedom. We're going to calculate our p-value, so we're using that chi-squared CDF. We have our lower bound as the test statistic, and our upper bound is positive infinity with one degree of freedom. So remember, we're always interested in the area more extreme, so the area above the test statistic. So this is a very, very, very small p-value. So the calculator gives it to you in scientific notation, so 3.47 times 10 to the negative 13. Because that value is so small, you have a variety of ways to write it. You can write it in the scientific notation format that the calculator gives. You could write it in the decimal format, which would be adding 12 zeros and then the 3 behind the decimal place. Or you can simply state that the p-value is less than 0 0.01. So that would indicate that your results are significant. So here, because our p-value is so small, I'm going to reject the null. And remember, that's what you do in step four. So then finally, because step five addresses the amount of evidence you have for the alternative, because we had such a small p-value and we made the choice to reject the null, in step five, we would say that there is sufficient evidence to suggest our alternative, which here is going to be There is a relationship between snoring and heart disease. Now, because our population was just the general public, I don't have to really specify the group that I made the inference on because this would be an inference made on all people in general.